Hello, everybody. Welcome along to Sports Bet TV with me, Paul Alster. We're looking forward to um, what should be a great weekend's racing, weather permitting, with some terrific action of the likes of uh, Cheltenham and Doncaster and over in Ireland as well. Uh, but of course, the weather could very easily take a hand, and the forecasts are not overly um, optimistic, but we'll hopefully. Hopefully we'll get there. I have one recommendation for you, and I'm pretty optimistic that's at a meeting where racing is going to take place. Now, if you're new to the service, just uh, stumbling across this um, uh, tipping uh, service on YouTube for the first time, do press the subscribe button. It's free just below this screen, and you'll be able to uh, follow me uh, whenever you wish. And it costs absolutely nothing. Um, what I would say is that last week we had a couple of selections and uh, one of them ran quite well, Southfield Harvest, who was recommended at 25 to 1 uh, on the Thursday when I posted the bulletin and um, he finished fourth in the end, just getting tired after a very long absence. Most firms, though, were only paying three places, so I'm not claiming it as a place, although one or two of you might have got lucky and um, been with a firm that was being uh, fairly generous and sticking with the four places. The other horse didn't really uh, do itself justice. But I hope that this week's selection will. And I'm going to move straight on to it now, because with uh, quite a few question marks about Cheltenham, where there is some great racing scheduled, and also Doncaster and even Hereford, where there are one or two nice races, um, traditionally, it tends to be just that touch warmer over in Ireland. Uh, and it's rare that racing in Ireland is abandoned due to frost or a frozen surface, much more likely in Britain. Of course, it would be sans law that it'll happen this time. But anyway, I'm interested in a race at Navan, where there's a good card on Saturday and there's a really competitive hot handicap chase at 102 at Navan. It's a two and a half mile Fox Rock handicap chase. 13 runners declared, yielding to soft ground. But at the time of this recording, on Thursday lunchtime, no bookmakers are offering any prices, despite the fields having been declared at least uh, three hours ago. Anyway, so I'm going to be estimating the market for you. What I will say is that there have been three winning favourites from the last 10 renewals of this race. And of the other seven, only one winner has been double figures. And that was the 10 to 1 chance Polly down for Willie Mullins in 2017. And that tells me that for the most part, it does appear that in this race, horses uh, in single figures, fairly prominent in the market, have a, a, a best chance. Now, as you know, I like to find you big priced each way runners, but they have to have a realistic chance. Uh, and the one I fancy here is going to be, I think, sort of high single figure odds. So certainly worth a bet um, if that proves to be the case. Now, Shark Hamlin has had a great late summer and autumn, and he's got hallowed star who could be favourite here, uh, maybe at around the seven or two, four to one mark. Won very nicely on its second start over fences at Galway in October, and then was right there with them at the fourth last in a grade two at Punchestown three weeks ago uh, when he tipped up. So with a clear round here, he would have to go pretty close, I think. And he's in a handicap for the first time off a, a workable mark, possibly, of 137. Another man in very good form is Gordon Elliott, who's been firing in the winners right, left and centre of late. He saddles a couple. Uh, Indigo Breeze is one that will have plenty of support, I think. It was only five lengths behind Hallowed Star earlier in the term when it may have needed the run, and it's now four pounds better off for those five lengths, so that should bring them very much together. But since then, it's been second in two good races, one of them at Gowram Park, and the other one when it came over to Cheltenham and was a good second there. Another one also, first time in a handicap, and it's off 133. But to just um, add a bit of spice to the mix, uh, Gordon Elliott saddles Dun Boyne, a horse who is a law unto itself of late. Indeed, it refused to race three weeks ago. The tapes went up and he um, just uh, dug his toes in and refused to go anywhere. But then next time out, he was um, as good as gold at Gowan Park. Two weeks ago, he won by 10 lengths, absolutely scooted up. And he's gone up £10 for that. But this quirky horse could again uh, run a good race if he decides um, he fancies the job. Railway Hurricane is one of a couple for Gavin Cromwell. Now, this one was only beaten three quarters of a length in a pretty good two and a half mile novices handicap chase at Cheltenham four weeks ago. And he has to be respected. 
And Cromwell also saddles one for J.P. McManus called I Like the Way You're Thinking. Hasn't run for four and a half months, but is useful on its day. So I suggest that any market move in favour of I Like the Way You're Thinking has to be respected. Uh, so that could be a bit of a dark horse. Now, the top weight is Castle Grange uh, Paddy. He's been a terrific servant to Connections, but he's going to be 12 years old on New Year's Day. So certainly uh, is into the uh, veteran stage. But I think he will be better for his latest run. But my concern is that this uh, fast run two and a half miles is going to stretch his stamina to the limit. For me, he's best at two or up to two and a quarter. So that brings me to my selection for Saturday. And this is a horse called Take All. Take All is trained by Seamus Sparky and is the man of Kevin Sexton. He's a seven-year-old gelding. Uh, his last win came at Wexford in a two-mile beginner's chase in October of last year. Um, he then went on to be second in the grade three novice chase on this very card last year. And that was behind Riviere Detel, who is a good performer. And the horse has run some solid starts uh, since then over hurdles and fences throughout the course of last winter and the very early spring before he faded uh, as the uh, season drew to a close. And I think he was probably over the top, to be fair, by then. Now then, this term he's had two runs. Almost certainly was in need of the run when he reappeared at Down Royal on bonfire night over hurdles. Uh, but he was much, much better when second of 14 and beaten less than two lengths to uh, Fossa Doulage at uh, Punchestown over two and three quarter miles three weeks ago. Now he travelled well and he looked as if he might have a squeak going to the final fence. For me, he just didn't quite get home as well as the winner, even though, of course, he had plenty of horses behind him. So I'm quite pleased to see that he's dropping back to two and a half miles, which in a strongly run race should be his optimum conditions, in my view. And also it's encouraging that the handicapper has seen fit um, to only put him up the two pounds because I thought having pulled so far clear of the rest, the handicapper might really get his claws in. So I do think that take hall has got a, a proper chance. Now, the only minor guide to the way this market could look uh, comes on the Sporting Live website, uh, which is a very uh, iffy when it comes to their betting forecast. They're suggesting 10 to 1 take hall. Well, um, I'd say that would be a very good price if you could get it. But I'm suggesting he's going to be eight to one each way. I'll be looking for eight to one each way. Maybe bigger will be available somewhere or who knows, there might be money for it. But I think he will be an each way uh, price, a fair working man's each way price. And that's my selection take all at Navan on Saturday in the 102. And I've gone with that, as I said, because there is so much uncertainty about the likes of Cheltenham, Doncaster, etc. Now, of course, hopefully they will race at Cheltenham and Doncaster. And if they do, then I will have a number of selections available on my out in front service, uh, which I came up with a really nice, uh, tasty seven to one winner last week and an 18 to one place amongst my few selections uh, last weekend. So take a look. And maybe this is something that you'll be interested in as we look forward to the Christmas period coming up soon with the likes of Kempton and Chepstow, the big festival meetings. And of course, over in Ireland, Leopardstown and Limerick also with brilliant racing. Hello, I'm Paul Alster. Since July 2020, my followers have enjoyed some really great success here with my regular Saturday and festival tips here at Sportsbet TV. Well, now I'm offering an enhanced tipping service called Out In Front, aiming for plenty of big odd selections on far more racing days. So to continue receiving my profitable and enjoyable each way and often long odds racing selections, sign up now on Patreon for my low cost, brand new live tipping service where you can interact with me and ask questions and comment in real time. So signing up to Out In Front only takes two minutes. First, choose a membership, then sign up, add a payment method, and then you'll get all the benefits of being an Out In Front member. I can't wait to see you, so sign up to the new Out In Front real-time tipping service with me, Paul Alston. So that's Out In Front. Do give it a coat of looking at, and you can check all the information you need to know about it on the link 
just below this screen. But for now, from me, Paul Alster, uh, here at Sportsbet, uh, stay warm uh, this weekend. And let's hope uh, plenty of racing does go uh, under starters' orders. But fingers crossed that this one I've tipped you at Navan on Saturday will run well. Bye-bye for now. 